Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Washington. As the Russian protests rocked the plans of President Putin, who, as Boris Kargalitsky wrote, wanted the elections to legitimize decisions that had already been made, these protests, as he said, essentially were led by segments that were more or less neoliberal or nationalist, but not much by what I guess Boris would call the left. And why is that? So now joining us to talk about the state of the left in Russia is Boris Kargalitsky. As I said in the early interview, he's a sociologist. He was a deputy to the Moscow City Soviet between 1990 and 93, and he's currently the director of the Institute of Globalization and Social Movements in Moscow. Thanks for joining us, Boris. Hi. So let's just sort of pick up where, where we were from the earlier interview. Um, what, why isn't the left stronger, or is it getting stronger? What, what's the situation? Well, the left is weak, of course, uh, though I think it's a global problem. It's not just about Russia. Uh, but, of course, the protests were very much influenced by the left uh, at the grassroots level. And, for example, if you are uh, looking at the pictures taken from the uh, rallies in Moscow, and there you can see, of course, a lot of uh, right-wingers waving their uh, so-called imperial flag, but also quite a lot of red flags. And, in reality, uh, the number of people with... Uh, uh, leftist slogans and flags were, uh, it was much bigger than the number of nationalists. Just nationalists are mm, more kind of rich. They, they can simply uh, buy, uh, or I mean, order more flags. So uh, I saw it was kind of funny during demonstrations that mm, if you see a right wing column, uh, then you see that every second person is with a flag, and the column is very small, but it has like 20 flags with maybe 50, 60 people, but then you see a column of maybe uh, 300 people coming uh, uh, to represent some left-wing organization, and they usually have one flag or two flags. Give us a picture of the political landscape of the left or such in Russia. I mean, people in, in the West know next to nothing. And, you know, we read polls that, I don't know, 35, 40 percent of Russians say they would like to go back to the old Soviet Union. And, and we, what, give, us, give us a sense of what is the left and how does it position itself within this historical well, context? That, uh, well, well, I think the situation is not very different compared to what you see anywhere in the world, because, of course, you see some groups which are trying to continue the Stalinist uh, tradition. Also, you see quite a few Trotskyist groups, and you see some social democrats, and you see anarchists, and, uh, well, you see all the same uh, elements anywhere. And uh, in that sense, Russia is not any different. Um, the landscape is pretty much the same as, as elsewhere. Uh, the big question is, uh, how relevant are these groups and forces uh, politically? And here we see also a very serious problem, because in Russia we don't have a system which allows you to have uh, political parties properly, uh, because, uh, yes, there are so-called uh, registered political parties, which are either created by the very same presidential administration in an artificial way, uh, created by a person who used to be the deputy uh, leader of presidential administration, Mr. Vladislav Surkov, who is now removed from his job after this a big protest, and uh, also you have the old Communist Party, uh, which uh, is not a Communist Party, that's another big irony, it's a uh, nationalist party, which uh, is a, uh, racist, anti-Semitic, uh, clerical, uh, it praises Russian Orthodox Church as its source of inspiration, uh, it's very anti-Marxist in, uh, in its rhetoric and so on, uh, and, and at the same time it uh, tries to um, appeal to the Soviet nostalgia, but representing Soviet Union uh, just as a great empire which was destroyed and saying, well, there was no difference between the Soviet Union and the Tsarist Empire. It was basically the continuation of the same, and it's very bad that the empire now is uh, destroyed, so we just have Russia only. And how much, support does yes. the, how much support does that Communist Party have? Well, uh, uh, that's exactly the other problem, because uh, you never know, because uh, you see, uh, if you see the electoral results, uh, it's the second biggest party in, in the country. Uh, in fact, I think they even got many more votes 
because that's exactly the problem of uh, uh, vote rigging, so that electoral process was uh, uh, distorted by fraud. Uh, but at the same time, uh, then you get to another point. Most people who voted for the party didn't vote for the party, because the slogan of uh, uh, opposition in this election, at least the official opposition, was vote for anyone except United Russia, uh, which was the, the Putin party nominally. And then people saw who were the biggest uh, contender uh, who, was, who was not called United Russia. They said, well, that's the Communist Party. They called, voted for the Communist Party. And um, that's about it. Uh, in fact, you see, the, now this party is actually falling apart because um, different regional groups are in total uh, disconnect with the central leadership. Uh, some groups are really trying to uh, act as, as some kind of social democratic party. Sometimes they're acting as far right. Sometimes they're trying to act as some kind of uh, populist left. Uh, even they, they just use the brand name uh, and registration, and uh, yeah. it's a little disarray. Get back to what we're sort of more what yeah. we would understand as a real as a left, which I guess is opposed to neoliberal kind of economic policies, is for a more modern vision of what a socialism might be. What, where is that left? Well, there are quite a few groups. And, uh, of course, uh, as always, they are split into, into tendencies. And uh, to make things worse, uh, there is a very, very bad legacy of uh, uh, inner fighting. Uh, and it is very interesting because... Uh, the, the infighting uh, which we find among Russian leftists, it's not very much sectarian. It's not about politics. It's not even about ideology. It's not even about some kind of group identities or anything like that. It's just very personal. Sometimes it's a struggle for the resources, which, which are, are very limited. Sometimes, I mean, you, you see all sorts of terrible personal animosities. And uh, in that sense, very often, uh, it's very hard to explain what's the politics behind these, these struggles and, and, and fights. Uh, but, uh, well, on the other hand, what is interesting is that um, uh, the new generation of activists is coming into the movement, and they are very much changing the situation. The numbers of people are growing. Uh, the numbers of people who call themselves left uh, are growing very, very fast. And... Uh, also, uh, you see, the process in many ways is a revolutionary one, because though uh, at this point it's very much a split within the elite, uh, within the ruling class, which is going on, but it also opens up the political space for all sorts of different forces and opportunities. And in that sense, uh, the left uh, is uh, trying to kind of use these new opportunities and, and regroup. And uh, there is a process going on uh, for some kind of uh, unity of the left, which I think will be achieved. And it is a very, uh, very funny situation because about like seven months ago, ten months ago, you see people also almost, almost uh, ready to cut each other's throats. And now they're all becoming uh, very friendly. They're all coming together. They're all uh, now calling for united action and you know, coordinating committees and so on and so on. However, I don't see that uh, to be so positive because, uh, well, there is a positive side uh, to it, definitely. But on the other hand, again, uh, it's very much like a, a personal, uh, personal decision to, to stop fighting and start um, a new friendship rather than a political decision to uh, launch a new project. And... For example, our institute, which is the leading Russian left-wing think tank, or in fact, we think we are the, we are the leading one because we are the only one. There, are, there is no, no similar institution to compete with us, which is a very good news because, uh, as I told you before, Russian political competition very often is very unfriendly. But uh, our, our approach is that we uh, insist on uh, putting forward politics. Let's first discuss politics before calling for unity or, or, or integration or, or right. some kind of united and, front. And, right, and to what extent has the Russian situation been influenced by what's been going on in the Arab countries or even the Occupy movement, uh, you know, in the U.S. and some other places? Well, it was. It was, definitely. And I think there is a lot of interest uh, 
uh, Egypt is becoming very popular. Occupy Wall Street is extremely popular. Uh, also, European protest movements are seen with a lot of interest. Greece, for example. Uh, I think there was a lot of influence. Uh, and initially, there was also a lot of envy because people saw, okay, Arabs, we, you know, Russians are extremely racist, to be honest. And, and Russians said, well, look, Arabs are more capable of protesting or resisting than us. And that was seen as a, as, as a very simulating use for the Russians. And just a final question. What, what is the role of and are there independent unions? What's happening amongst workers in Russia? Well, there are independent unions. Uh, there were some very important strikes in the, um, in the last phase of economic uh, expansion. Like in 2007, there were quite a few strikes which were quite uh, important. Uh, the strongest union among them is uh, the Union of Automakers or uh, Auto Workers uh, Union. I think like, like in Canada also, it's a, it's a very, very important uh, militant union, and uh, their leader, Alexei Etmanov, is extremely popular among working-class people and uh, among the left, though, again, I think it's very serious that um, leadership is very personalized, so it's, it's very much like a populist movement rather than a proper democratic union in many ways. Uh, but, uh, yes, the unions are there. At the same time, however, you must understand that Russia... Um, had uh, to undergo a very dramatic deindustrialization process. And uh, in that sense, the working class is massively weakened and uh, disoriented and uh, fragmented. So in that sense, there are free trade unions. Some of them are uh, important, but uh, still the labor movement is uh, not very strong. All right. Thanks very much for joining us, Boris. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.